Hi, I'm Mike Callagher. Today on the Spec Show, I'm going to go over a little review on the angle grinders. We're here today at the Virginia Beach Fire Department's Structural Collapse School, sponsored by the Virginia Task Force 2. We're over at the B&B &B section, so as you can tell, a little bit noisy with all the breakers and saws running, which is pretty cool in my mind because we get to enjoy a little B&B &B action, is what I like to call it. So just a quick review on these angle grinders. Um, I found a couple little uh, things that we were seeing some of the students uh, not picking up and some things you would think that may be common sense to a lot of people weren't so common. So just kind of a little review. What I have here is an assortment of four and a half inch angle grinders. We found this to be kind of the, the go-to instead of a four inch or a seven inch or anything bigger than that for cutting rebar and doing some breaching and breaking work. With that being said, the four and a half will take a four inch angle grinder um, wheel as well as a little bit bigger however you'll have to take the guard off and we'll talk about that in a second of the dangers of that as it goes so as you see here we have corded saws now with the uh, of course uh, battery powered units have been out for quite a while we have a battery powered um, unit here it does get a little bit heavier but it doesn't have the cord which makes it very nice so let's talk about the uh, inner uh, different types of wheels that you can get out there and this is where some of the th confusion comes from these thicker wheels with a beveled edge like this will have they're for grinding metal and a lot of times it'll say that we want to grind away stuff they're not designed to cut I've seen people trying to cut with them and it's just gonna take you forever to cut through something like that and obviously the thicker the wheel is you can imagine how long it would take to cut then you come to something more, a little bit smaller curve, as you can see the diameter of this wheel is so much thinner. This is good for cutting, okay? Really nice for cutting. And then of course with the invention of multi-purpose wheels, this happens to be a, a brand name a wheel here, is a metal cutting wheel and it's made out of metal. It lasts a lot longer. However, we did have found that your composite wheels cut a lot better than these do on steel. However, as you know, with the composite wheels, these tend to get, they go, uh, start wearing down and they basically uh, start disintegrating, you know, so they're consumable, where the metal one stays, uh, um, it'll last a lot longer. Of course, you're talking, uh, you can get these for a couple dollars a piece and these things up to $18, so you gotta outweigh the uh, cost benefit analysis there as you go. In rescue work, these tend to work really well and they hold up pretty good. Uh, just a different assortment of different types of wheels. These abrasive wheels uh, are good for, again, for cutting. Another grinding wheel here. This is one that's been used. This is a five inch wheel, okay? A lot of people will try to interface this with a four and a half inch angle grinder. As you can see where, as you would put it on, it's gonna hit this guard. You'll see on this um, angle grinder, there's no guard on this. This becomes very dangerous because if one of these um, blades hits something or gets stress cracked from the heat, they'll tend to uh, come apart. Same with your composite wheels. So if you don't have, uh, in a safe area where you would have full face protection, uh, a, a rated uh, full face um, guard on there, I would strongly recommend not taking the guard off. I see people do it all the time. I don't recommend it. I like to have the guard on the, on the uh, tool itself. And as you can see, these guards move around, and I think people just get tired of it, and they, they, they tend to want to take the guards off, and it's just not a good idea, because you're only getting so much depth as it is. All right? Another thing is you can buy wheels, like this 7-inch one here, just an example. You can get them in different sizes. They will screw on to the tool itself, okay? So you can buy them like that, or you can buy them already with the um, with the arbor already gone and it'll interface down on the uh, on the um, angle grinder as, it's, as it goes. Getting these uh, off is pretty simple. You push the button in the back of it to, to lock the, lock the uh, motor out or the, uh, the drive mechanism and then you simply want to take the nut off and here's another confusing part. People will put these on and then they'll with this wheel, when they put it on, 
which way does the nut go? All right, for a flat wheel like this cutting one, you want to have the nut without the, uh, the raised part to come up, okay? A lot of people will turn it this way, and what happens, it'll, they'll tighten this thing up, and it'll seem tight, but this will come loose, and you can see how far that stands up, all right? So you want to put the nut on like this where it would tighten the wheel up. And you don't need to put a wrench on it. What I do is I just hold the uh, lock down and just give it a little, a little tug like that. If you tighten it down with a wrench, you're going to get it tightened so hard that you're not going to be able to get the nut off, all right? So the nut is also designed for when you're using a, a grinding wheel is that now that indentation will go down inside that wheel like right there. The, the thin ones it will not. So as you can see it interfaces much better and it also keeps this flat um, side down so when you're grinding you're not getting into your nut as well. Um, again you have your, uh, your, um, your battery powered one, we have a, a, a corded saw over here with the newer wheel on it and then a couple uh, uh, different brands. They're all very similar, depends on what size. And just really just go out there and get familiar with your tools um, before, you, uh, before you get in there. Read on them, what size wheel does it take, or, or blade, whatever you want to call it, and, uh, and then go from there. Okay, hopefully that knocked off some cobwebs on the uh, angle grinder. If you have any questions, you can contact us. For the Spec Show, I'm Mike Callagher. To find out more information about Spec International, your solutions expert, give us a call at 757-468-4513 or check out our website at www.specrescue.com.